Hey, thanks for joining in with us on another episode here of About Faith. Uh, over here where we believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we're going to continue to talk about the word of God in order to grow our faith. So uh, this week we continue our discussion on finding your identity in God. And today I have a guest with me, uh, Christopher Carr Jr., a great young man of God uh, who's doing some amazing things in the, his community in the area where he's at. Uh, Chris, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How you doing, CJ? I'm doing great, man. I'm glad that you decided to stop by and discuss this with me. Uh, I think it's a very ne much needed topic right now, especially for uh, young young adults and teenagers uh, to talk about, you know, finding their identity in God. You're a young man that I see that uh, that is strong in God. And I believe that people could learn a lot uh, from, you know, your wisdom and what you have and how you've came to that uh, to be at, at that stage. But before we get into those questions, I uh, definitely want to give people a chance and give you an opportunity to tell people uh, more about yourself and who you are um, and give them the, your life story uh, up to this point. OK, uh, well, my name is Christopher Carr, uh, born and raised in Anniston, Alabama. Uh, my pastor is uh, my father. Actually, he just got installed as pastor a couple months ago. And we'll officially go through his ceremony uh, here soon. Uh, my bishop, uh, Bishop Macy Carr, is my, actually my grandfather, and uh, he served as my pastor all my life. Uh, so what I know about ministry comes uh, from a rich heritage uh, from my family and uh, a number of people that have poured into my life, um, both spiritually and naturally. Um, but my story is, uh, I, I would say, one for the record books. <laughs> um I grew up in church. Uh, I knew the ways of God uh, at an early age, the age of six. Uh, the Lord showed me that I'd be a preacher. And uh, it was something that I was just like, I don't know, because I seen everything my parents went through uh, when it involved ministry, the tireless nights. Uh, I seen what my grandfather experienced, uh, how he had to sacrifice and he was giving when he didn't have and uh, all so on and so forth. And it, I had a very bad understanding uh, at an early age. So it, it, it turned my, my, my heart from, you know, really serving God. And um, another excuse that I had was there was no other young people around me that were saved and were living a life pleasing to God. So I was just like, I'm just going, uh, I'm not going to be a hypocrite because I, I completely understand and uh, I'd rather just not live for God. So I had made up in my mind when I got older, uh, I was going to do my own thing. Uh, I actually went and played college baseball for a couple of years in Kentucky and uh, had a wonderful time. But, uh, you know, the scripture talks about the ways of a transgressor are hard. And I really began to experience those hard aspects of life. I remember, uh, you know, it seemed like every time I would get money, uh, I would just, in, in a couple minutes, uh, my money would be gone or uh, going through bad relationships and so on and so forth. But I, the Lord really had his hand on my life, all my life. Uh, I always stuck out like a sore thumb. Uh, people really didn't understand me. They would, uh, they would always look at me and know there was something different about me, even though they didn't even know that I was a church kid and uh, our, our preacher's kid. And, uh, and but lo and behold, one day I remember uh, I went out one night and uh, I had a good time at a party, came back and I had a real encounter with God. And I literally, you know, they talk about when you die, you see your life flash before your eyes. And I literally was like a movie was before me. And I seen uh, I seen everything that I experienced through life from when I was a baby all the way up to that moment. And it was just flashing before my eyes. And I knew I was just, I knew I was dying. And I heard the voice of the Lord and he told me, you know, you're either going to live for me or you're going to die and go to hell. And mm -hmm. clearly my answer is, you know, I want to live. I don't want to, I don't want to go to hell. Cause I, I knew, I knew what hell would be like. And uh, the Lord, he, you know, he saw fit. I didn't give my heart to the Lord then, uh, but it was all steps lining up to that that moment. Uh, I was in a relationship at the time and uh, baseball wasn't going well for me. So, I, you know, I told the young lady, you know, give me a reason to stay. And believe it or not, in that moment, God shut that girl's mouth right when she was about to tell me something. She just cried and she was just like, you know, I, 
I, I don't know what to say. So I knew that was the Lord telling me it's time to go home. And this was in 2016 and um, end up coming home. Uh, I had another experience. Uh, I, I was out with some friends and I seen a, a guy get shot before my eyes. And it, it sounds like a tragic story, but uh, I'm telling you all this, God allowed all these things to take place. So he would, and it, it turned me, it wasn't him tempting me, but he allowed it to go on because it showed me that my life is his life and uh, I owe him my life. And uh, I seen the guy get shot. And uh, in that moment, instantly, I knew, all right, this is it. I'm done. I'm done running. I'm done trying to do my own thing. I'm going to surrender to the Lord. And in 2017, uh, in October, I gave my lot to the Lord. I've been running ever since. Uh, here now, I serve as uh, what they call the a youth pastor. I'm the youth minister at Anston Full Gospel Holy Temple. I love my young people. I love talking about young people. Uh, and my aim and my goal is to ensure that these kids get everything that they need, both in perspective and uh, also, I want to stir their stir their lives that they're glorifying God in all that they do. And I can see how the Lord has truly been a blessing our ministry. We've added so much here recently, and I'm looking forward with, to what happens next. Uh, but I, I'm truly an example of, you know, if you give your heart to the Lord, God will order your steps and things will get better. Uh, people talk about how living the life of a Christian can be boring, but, and I, I believe we're going to dive into that here tonight, but uh, I have found nothing but excitement and joy and I'm just loving every step of the way, but that's a little bit about me. Um, well, that's great. Um, I know you said you've been, you're enjoying serving the Lord and you're loving working with people and God has been blessing your life. Um, so I um, just want to kind of jump into some of these questions, man. And um, you can kind of just, you know, help and, since you've been saved, since God saved you, I believe you said, what did, how old were you again when you said that God saved you? I was, was four years this year. I was 21 years old. 21 years old? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, well, that's great uh, to hear that you were 21. So um, how long have you been saved now? How long has God been keeping? Because I know you're still very young. So yeah. and I'm an old uh, man now. I'm not as <laughs> young as I used to be. But <laughs> <it's>, uh, <laughs> You know, uh, I'm going to say four years. Yeah. Four years. Yes, sir. Four years. You see, that's a, that's a great thing because a lot of times you don't have people holding on now for, mm -hmm. you know, weeks or even a you know, week or months, right? So, um, but obviously you said that God has been blessing you and I can tell, again, you enjoy living for God. You can see the joy that God has given you. So just wanted to kind of like start off and maybe talk about, uh, one question is I have here for you is um, why does why do you think um, identity in Christ matters? Say it one more time. Why do you think identity in Christ matters? Identity in Christ. Why does it matter? Um, I guess initially we would have to uh, define identity uh, and. Uh, not only just uh, that definition, but how does it apply to our lives? And uh, I believe it matters um, initially identity, you know, you knowing who you are, um, who do you identify yourself with? Um, it matters because there's so many people nowadays uh, that claim to be Christians. And I just we're just going to talk about it because I. Uh, and you see it today. There's so many people that state they're Christian, but when you look at their lifestyle, it does not reflect a life that is Christ-like. And uh, I didn't, when you identify yourself with Christ, that, that means that you are, in a sense, you're living a life exactly like Christ lived, or your, your aim and your, your purpose, your goal, your drive is to be like Christ. And there's so many people that state this but in all ra reality they're not they're not uh forming their lives in that way and it's hard and it's conflicting for people who you know they're looking for a hope they're looking for purpose and jesus is the answer but when they see oh johnny down the street or sally uh they say they're christians but they're able to go out uh on thursday night because it's thirsty thursday 
and have a good time. But in church on Sunday morning, they're like, hey, you know, if Jesus is that, if Jesus is like that, he's going to let them do that. You know, why even get saved when they're doing the same thing as me? So I believe when you identify yourself with Christ and say, I belong to Christ, I'm his bride, then your life should reflect what you say. And um, it's just hard. It's challenging right now because I have so many young people that I deal with. And the reality is there's so many kids within their prospective classrooms or that they uh, commune with. And they're saying these things and living another thing and trying to find that the words to say or to show them in scripture that, hey, you know, even though they're doing this, this is exactly how you need to live and be that light and that example. So it's very important that we not only say that we're Christians, but uh, we live what we say. So I hope I didn't get off topic, but no, no, I, no. I believe that was the perfect way to answer that question. No, no, no. You you were great. You were great. Uh, I, I totally understand that. Um, and um, I would say like going, going in like further, like maybe you can explain too. Like, so how does, my identity in Christ change once I give my life to Christ. I mean, you kind of talked about it. Like I can't be like everybody else. Right, right. You know what I mean? They, they can't, I can't be going to those thirsty Thursdays and then trying to be a Christian. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I have to have something that's different, right? Like I have, it, it, it has to be a different because why would other people want to give their life to God if they see me doing the exact same thing? that they're doing. So obviously my life in Christ has to be something different than what uh, the, the world will say, well, you did the world, right? The, mm -hmm. um, the secular world, what is what they're doing? Um, so um, with you, I would say once you got safe, like, um, so we know that your, your identity changed, what helped you to find your identity in Christ? Uh, I, I would initially start with prayer. Uh, I pray. <laughs> uh, so many people overlook the power of prayer and reading the word uh, and fasting. They those are the fundamentals of any Christian. And I initially started off with those three things. I, I really dug deep in the word. I wanted to know who God was. What was his his plan for my life? What was my purpose? And uh, a scripture that really sticks out or stuck out for me was uh, 1 Peter 2 and 9. It says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, uh, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So uh, in that scripture, it tells me for one, my identity, I'm royal, I'm chosen, uh, I'm peculiar, I'm strange. Uh, I, I'm a holy, I'm a holy people. I belong to a holy nation. Uh, that right there, that scripture showed me who I was. And then I found purpose in that scripture because it tells us in that scripture that our purpose is to go out and show this glorious life, show the the realness of God and how he was able to change who I was and to who I, who I am today. Uh, so uh, as a Christian, what I do now, uh, when I used to go out on Thursday nights, uh, now I if I'm not sharing, uh, showing in like Bible study with some of the young people or uh, just hanging around the saints, uh, I'll be at home and I'll, you know, I live a normal life. Uh, I live uh, uh, like here now we got hunting season coming up. So uh, I'm going to experience that on tomorrow. And uh, so I'm looking forward. It, it's not a matter of a lot. People look at the restrictions when it comes to, uh, serving the Lord. And it's not all, it's not about the restrictions and it's that I choose not to do and be who I used to be. Um, so uh, when I reflected on scripture and I started applying that to my life, that's when uh, opportunities begin to open up and I begin to see, all right, this is what I can partake in. This is what I shouldn't partake in. Uh, and it's because I prayed, I sought God, I read my word, and I believe if you do those same things, God will direct you and better show you, all right, this is the life that I have chose for you. And this is how I want you to go about doing it. Yeah, I, I love I love that you went to uh, the scripture talking about uh, that we are 
a royal priesthood because royalty doesn't act like everybody else. Right, right, right. right. There's a standard that royalty has to have, mm -hmm. right? Um, and there's a way that, you know, uh, we should carry ourselves, I would say, mm -hmm. uh, as Christians, if we are calling ourselves to be Christians. You know me, I got saved. Uh, off the, I also grew up in church, right? Uh, my granddad is a is a uh, pastor. My mom was a preacher. Like, so um, I even remember, like, we would have, like, street services, and my mom would take me out with the street service as a kid. Like, she was still going to do a work for the Lord. And mm -hmm. uh, even with me getting older, um, I still had to realize, like, hey, you know, I'm different. Um, than what I was, you know, before I became a child of God. And a lot of times what the devil tries to do is fight you, um, especially when you first get saved that, you know, you're not different. You're still the same. Uh, you're still the same old Chris. You're still the same old CJ. Mm -hmm. right? And you're not. You're not. You know, God has changed you and you're royal. And, um, and the first thing a lot of times what he tries to do is have those old friends to come back, to try to pull you back into those same old habits and uh, those same old areas in so how would you tell like um, young people, you know, teens and, um, uh, you know, young adults uh, to deal how to deal with that portion of pressure of those friends that try to pull you back into that old lifestyle? I'm pretty sure it happened to you. I know it happened to me. Yes. So I'm yes. pretty sure you have some things that you could share on, you know, how to deal with that, because you don't want to turn them away from God. You want to pull them into God. Right. But you also. I mean, if they were your true friends, you still have love for them, but you also understand like, hey, we're on a different path now. You know, I, I'm i on a different road and this road is more important than anything. And how did you handle, you know, how, how did you handle that? And what advice could you give some other young people and young adults on how to handle that experience? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, after I got done playing baseball and I ended up giving my heart to the Lord, uh, the hardest thing that I faced I, in those first, my, my father would always tell us, especially ministers meet, once you get someone saved, uh, those first seven days are crucial uh, because you're getting pulled from all these influences and you need to really be in that person's ear. So I had uh, the right people in my corner with that being my parents. They were praying with me, uh, keeping up with me. Um, but in terms of friendship, uh, that was the hardest battle that I faced, uh, letting go of who I was and letting go of the relationship and that perspective with that individual. Because a lot of times what happens when you get saved, uh, the people that you hang with, they want to reminisce and talk about those times of old and how, oh, man, you remember when we went out, we did X, Y and Z. And like, it'll get you grinning. You're like, yeah, yeah, we had a good time. It was going down. And like, you don't realize, but those are, they were seized up, the, just like the Bible talks about the little foxes and the, they're planting those seeds down inside of you. And you're like, oh man. So like, you're thinking about the things of God and then here comes, uh, here comes those different memories coming up, popping back up. And you're like, Lord, where's this stuff coming from? But not realizing it was the conversation that you had just a couple hours ago. And all it is, is uh, the Bible talks about, uh, I think it was Paul who said a little leaven, love it the whole lump. So just a little, little taste. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit here, a little bit there. And the more that they continue to talk to you about those different experiences, before long, you're going to have a desire to go back and experience that thing because it's in your heart. Um, Jesus said, it's it's not what goes into a man that defiles him, but what comes out. Comes out. And uh, we don't realize, but uh, a lot of times what we hear, what we take in, it re it's reciprocated. So uh, there's a famous uh, in, uh, influence, I would say, back in the day. His name was uh, Ledwood Furbach. And he said, you are what you eat. So if I could tell anybody here tonight, uh, if your influence, if what you're feeding yourself is a lot of things that are not pleasing to God, uh, you're, you're feeding yourself with friendships that you know, people that are not living that lifestyle that you live, all you're doing is you're, you're putting that inside of you. And eventually it's going to reciprocate out just like the music you listen to. Like people don't realize, but there are so many people that listen to different uh, artists and uh, like rap and rock and where it talks about different things in the in R&B it talks about different things in those music 
And before long, you have those desires to want to do those things because that's right. what you're feeding yourself. Right. That's what um, so what I would tell a young person out there, a young adult, or, you know, even adults out there that's, you know, you're, you're walking this path. Uh, what I would say is initially that you're going to have to separate yourself. And I, what I had to do personally, a lot of people won't, probably won't have to do it or probably would be against it, but I had to cut everybody off. I cut them off. I said, look, you know, because what was happening is they, they kept trying to reminisce with me and I didn't need that. And I, I knew that if I was going to keep what God had given to me, I needed to let them go. So I would encourage you, if there's people in your life, they're not trying, they're not, uh, they're, they're trying to keep you to where you were or to try to prevent you from moving forward. They don't understand. They're not going to understand why you can't talk to them every day, or they're not going to understand why you don't want to sit and reminisce with them. They're not going to understand. So what I did was I cut them off. And for a season, I went without talking to them. I had, I even went so far as I changed my number. I changed all my social media. Uh, people kept talking about me because like, man, you got so many social media pages. How many, how many, how many friends were shit, uh, friend, uh, um, requests am I going to have to accept? And I was just like, I was going through and I needed, I needed that space and that to get away from where I was so I could move forward. And that's what I did. I removed myself from the situation. And it wasn't until I removed myself that God really began to speak to me and show me what I needed to work on it. And that relationship began to build because I had no one else to talk to, but him. Uh, so in terms of friendships, you have to draw the line and say, you know what, if I'm going to live the life of a Christian, if I'm going to live safe, if I'm going to say and state that I'm saved, there's certain people that I'm not going to be able to hang with and you're going to have to cut them off. And for some people, it might not be cut them off. Literally, you might just not talk to them as often. But what I had to do, I personally, and I knew it was the leading of the Lord, I literally had to cut these people off. And I did it and the Lord blessed me for it. And I, I just pray that what you do, that you pray about it, because what we're doing here tonight is giving you perspective uh, to show you, hey, you know, maybe maybe there's a better way of going about this. Uh, I'm not saying all friends are bad friends. Some some people that you have in your life are could be good. And they will grow with you. But oftentimes the devil will utilize these people that you have in your life to pull you right back. So what I had to do was cut them off and the Lord blessed me for it. And now I can say uh, after cutting a, uh, some of my friends off for years, I had a guy reach out to me last year and he actually came down and he came to church with me, man. He, he oh. wants to learn the things of God. And I just I all I could tell the Lord was thank you because he seen he seen that there was a change that took place in my life. And because the change that reciprocated, he that light drew him and was like, hey, I want to learn because he didn't grow up learning the things of God. He didn't he didn't grow up understanding this path. And now he's wanting to read his word. Now he's praying. He's asking me questions in the word. And that none of that would have happened if I wouldn't have cut these people off. So that's that's just a testimony. It happens. It might not happen for you that way. You might be able to retain all your friends and draw them all. But literally what's going to happen there, they're going to draw you or you're you're going to you're going to draw them. That's exactly what's going to happen. That's true, man. I'm glad I, lo I loved hearing that, too. And you know what the Bible tells us, right? We have to save ourselves from this yes. untoward generation. So mm -hmm. it does require some cutting off. It does require. I mean, I had friends that um, I still consider them my brothers. I still consider them my friends. And uh, I had those same friends from when I was. I mean, we grew up together. Right. You know, mm -hmm. as they say, we were knee high and we yeah. grew up to be men together. Right. And, um, you know, but Christ meant more to me and I knew I couldn't stay. Um, I couldn't hang with them every day. I couldn't talk to them every day because, like you said, it'll start draw, pulling you back mm -hmm. because you'll start reminiscing about those things. And the devil, you're not realizing what you're doing is you're feeding your flesh at that point mm -hmm. and you're not feeding your spirit. And so um, 
we talked about it earlier. Like you have to pray, right? Like you have to learn sure. to pray and talk to God because uh, that's that's how you're going to find who you are. Also, you're going to have to get in your uh, you're going to have to get in your word because you're not going to know who God is and who God wants you to be, who He's called you to be, without praying, talking to Him, and getting in your in your word. Um, in other words, to help keep that flesh under subjection, um, mm -hmm. so you can remove who you used to be and, and become who Christ uh, wants you to be. So I know we kind of talked about it. We've kind of hit on it, a lot of stuff pretty quick, um, <laughs> but I still want to uh, ask you and, um, you know, like what advice would you give uh, young people who are struggling, struggling with? I would say the peer pressure, right? So they didn't cut the friends off. They didn't do that, right? And now they're struggling with that peer pressure of, um, you know, maybe falling back into who um, they they once were. They may feel alone because, like me, I'm a I'm a loner. I can say <laughs> I'm uh, getting better at at it. Um, but um, everybody's not okay with that, right? Everybody can't be by themselves like that. But um, what would you, what, what advice would you give like teens and someone maybe coming up, whether they're in church, out of church, um, but they just, they grew up in church or out of church, but now they've given their life to Christ mm -hmm. and they feel alone. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what would you give advice you give to them to like not go back, but continue to hold on to God? Uh, I would initially start off by saying, uh, Anyone that lives this life, it's it comes with sacrifice. And I personally experienced so much that I had to give up. And initially what the devil is going to do and what your flesh is going to do is going to try and show you, hey, you're losing this. You're losing that. You love this. You enjoy this. Why would you want to why would you want to give this up? But one thing that I've learned and uh, the scripture that comes to mind is David saying, you know, uh, never have I seen the righteous forsaken nor see bad bread. And uh, if I look back over all my life and if I, if I'm looking back or to where I first started off uh, being saved, I would still tell myself it's worth it. Uh, don't reason why I say that is because you get back, so much more than you give up. I'm going to say that again. You get back so much more than you give up. God even talks about in your worry. He's not going to let you beat him giving. If you're sacrificing, you're giving up friends, you're giving up uh, cars, you're giving up land. He's going to turn around. He's going to restore to you those same things that you gave up. And I believe it's in Matthew talks about no man left houses, land, father, mother, brother, sister, who's not They're They're going to turn around and get it a hundredfold right back in this life and in the life to come. So you might give up something today, but tomorrow, your tomorrow might look a little brighter because God sees your heart. He sees exactly what you're going through. He sees exactly what you're trying to do. So my question that I would pose to the individual here tonight who might be struggling is what's important to you? Is living for God more important than your friends? Is living for God more important than to uh, be that that child and that your parents so desperately want and they're trying to pour and uh, get you to be such an influence or what 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 are you going to do with your life? Because at the end of the day, it's your choice. You got to seek out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. This is all up to you. Nobody can choose for you. But I'm telling you here tonight or and whenever time that you're listening to this, whatever that you give up, God will turn around and give it more. He'll give you more than what you asked for. Uh, I believe it's in Malachi. It, tells, it talks about proving me this day. Yes, See sir. if I won't open up the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. And so often we look at, and I, I, this is just the natural man. We look at what we're giving up and not looking at where we're going. Uh, when we testify uh, and we all are taught when we testify not to sit here and uh, talk about all the things that we did in our past, because that's not important. The, the importance of your testimony is to show people where you're going. 
Uh, we overcome him by the blood of the lamb and the words uh, of our testimony. Your testimony is great, but where are you going today? God didn't just save you to leave you down in the dumps. No, he brought you out of darkness. He picked you up out of a horrible pit. And he said he placed your feet on a rock to stand and he established your going. God is giving you uh, giving you something so special and so precious in earthen vessels. Uh, Peter talks about how we weren't redeemed by silver and gold, but by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And I, I, I'm not, I want to sound like I'm preaching here tonight, but like you got to look at what God is giving you, what kind of work God is doing in your life. And when you look at how you might be, uh, I heard one preacher talk about, we need more Andrews. And uh, Andrew was Simon Peter's brother. Andrew was the one who led Simon Peter to Jesus Christ. And Simon Peter was the one who reached millions, trillions. He's reaching people today through the word. And we we overlook and we, we look at what we got going on in life and not look at the perfect will of God for our lives. And if you really look at what God is trying to do in your life, you look at your salvation as the most important thing that you possess. I believe you'll make the choice of letting go of those things. I don't believe it per se as a struggle. I think I would say I would I would say it's a challenge internally because you're you're battling within because you don't you have not made up in your mind what's important. So I would uh, adjure you to decide within that your salvation is more important than friendship. And when you get to that point, God will reveal that, hey, there's somebody special that he wants to put in your life that's going to build you up in the admonition of the faith. There's somebody out there, just like Brother uh, CJ, uh, though we might be distant, and, uh, but he's my brother. And I know that I could call him up and he will encourage me to go on. But if I call up uh, my buddy Jack across the street, he's just going to pull me back to where I come from. So you need to really settle in your mind what is important. And I believe your salvation is more important than anything else on this earth. Yeah, I love it. I love it, man. I love uh, the conversation and the words that you've spoken on tonight. Uh, before I let you go, I just want to see, I know you just said some great things. You said some powerful things, but I'm pretty sure there's some other things you want to add that I may not have asked. Uh, so before I always give my guests a chance to um, just you want to say anything worthy of encouragement. What's on your heart and what would you want to leave with the people before we get out of here? Man, I could say a number of things, but initially the thing that comes to mind is uh, says in um, St. Mark's gospel it says to have faith in God uh, in these times we live in. Uh, challenging times. Uh, I can only understand or feel how uh, it is to even be navigating through school right now as a young person or uh, starting a new job and uh, not really knowing uh, what's going to happen if your, your job's going to be there on tomorrow. But I would tell you to have faith in God. Um, in this time, we really need to have faith in God because what society is pushing on us is uh, the agenda of that we need uh, to have faith in the governing bodies. And I don't talk against the governing bodies, but God is superior. He is the greatest source that this world has ever seen. And if we could dive in deep in our faith, I believe that God would pour us out tremendous opportunities, blessings, uh, things that we could never fathom, but it all comes down to diving into our faith. J you know, this podcast is a, a tremendous out uh, outreach ministry, and I believe the Lord's going to continue to bless it. But finding different resources like this and feeding yourself faith material day in, day out, allow God to increase your faith because in the days to come, we're going to need real faith in God. And without faith in God, we can't please God. So if I could encourage anybody here tonight, I would just tell you to have faith in God. Trust him no matter what's going on. Trust him in the midst of any kind of circumstance. And I believe that God will work things out for your good. Thank you again for 
uh, recording this podcast with me. I do appreciate you stopping by, man. Uh, I, I know they have enjoyed this episode. And until next time, we're going to go ahead and roll the outro. Yeah.